I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. Welcome to the BX channel. My name is Kenneth Dentley, and I welcome you today to our online teaching. I got a few questions that I want to take the time to ask you. And these are questions that were said to me by the Holy Spirit. And so here it is in the midst of all that's going on in the world today. Will you trust in God or will you place your confidence in man? Your faith will be tested in this hour. Again, I say it and I repeat it. Your faith will be tested in this hour. Will you trust in the God that you testified about in church? You will be tested in this hour, my friend. Or will you have faith in the Jehovah Jireh that you sing about? Or do you trust that he can heal and deliver you from the snares of the enemy? Yours and my faith will be tested in this hour. Will you trust in the healer and the keeper? Or will you run into the line to take that push? <laughs> Oh, yes, we must ask ourselves these questions. Do you believe that the will keep you and sustain you? Have you forgotten the healer, the provider, the way maker, the promise keeper, the deliverer, the sustainer? If you lost your job, your home, your car, your belongings, maybe even a family member, will you still maintain faith in God or will you just curse God and die? Our faith will be tested in this hour. In fact, it is being tested, ladies and gentlemen. We are being tested. All the things that we've learned from our teachers, have you just cast them away? Did you learn anything? Or did you just hear a good sermon? Our faith is being tested in this time right now. This is a time of testing. Will you pass? Or will you fail? These are the questions that we need to ask ourselves right now in this time. Because during this particular time of the season in which we're in, God is testing our hearts. One of the things that Jesus said, and I'm going to show it to you in the Bible. The scripture tells us in uh, Mark chapter 11, verse number 22, Jesus said, have faith in God. Notice what he says, have faith faith in God. Too many times we catch ourselves putting confidence in men and other things. But this is the time right now, brothers and sisters, where our faith will be tested. God wants to know, is he your all? God wants to know, do you really, really trust in the God that you sing about? <laughs> Jehovah Jireh, my provider, his grace is sufficient. God needs to know what's in your heart. And you know what? God knows already. You are the one that needs to know. I think I said that in the last video that I put out about the testing, because we need to be honest with God. We need to be honest with ourselves, because too many of us today, we are duped into believing that we have something that we really don't have, and that is faith in God. Now, let's talk about something in the book of Luke. I'm going to share out of the scripture here in Luke. And we're going to look at uh, Luke chapter eight and we're going to talk about, you know, Jesus was talking about the, the parables. He was giving them the parables of the of the of the, the seeds, the sower that sows the seed. And one of the things that he said, um, you know, the Bible tells us that while Jesus was talking about these things, he mentioned something about the time of testing. I'll tell you what, let's go into. Uh, yeah, let's go into Luke chapter number eight. And we're going to look at it in verse number number 11. We'll start with verse number 11 here. Okay. Now, the parable is this. Now, he's telling the parable. The seed is the word of God. Those by the wayside are the ones who hear. Then the devil comes and take away the word out of their hearts, lest they should believe and be saved. But the ones on the rock are those who, when they hear, receive the word with joy. Notice, receive it with joy. I've talked about just hearing a good sermon. And these have no root who believe for a while and in the time of temptation fall away. Now, the NIV talks about in the time of testing in that same scripture there. So there is a time of testing that will come to us. And that word testing is the word pierismos. Okay. And that is Greek word meaning an experiment, an attempt, a trial, an approving 
It is the trial of man's fidelity, virtue, and constancy. It is the condition of things or a mental state by which we are enticed to sin or to lapse from the faith and holiness. It is, listen to me very carefully, adversity, affliction, trouble that's allowed by God and serving to test or prove one's character, faith, or holiness. Once again, let me say that again. It is adversity, affliction, and trouble allowed by God and serving to test or to prove one's character, faith, and holiness. Will we get out of character? Will we get out of faith? Will we get, uh, uh, will we lose our holiness? Will we just, you know, somebody said one time before, you know, man, I, I'm, I'm, I'm just, just struggling here or whatever. And I, I, you know what, I'm just going to get me some, get me some cigarettes, smoke some cigarettes or, or, you know, I'm just going to go get me some drink and I'm just going to get drunk and just drive my troubles away. No, you're about to compile the troubles upon you. Why? What's going on? Will you lose your holiness, your sanctification, your separateness from the world? in the midst of the time of testing. We will be tested. And once again, in that, in the New International Version, the Bible says, in the time of testing, they fall away. Will that be your story? Will that be your epithet? You fell away from the faith. Now, remember the Bible tells us in the last days, many shall depart from the faith and many are going to be offended. That's what Jesus said. Many will become offended. And, you know, he tells us about in the time of destiny, they will fall away. So things didn't go the way we thought they should go. So what do we do? We fall away? No. No, no. COVID came. And, you know, somebody said, well, you know, I, I, I lost my job doing COVID. You know, uh, someone said, you know, um, I lost a spouse. I lost a loved one, you know, doing COVID or whatever. You know, I don't want to serve God. There are many people today that don't serve God or don't even believe in God or say they don't believe in God because they had a brother, sister, mother, father, someone that's close to them that, you know, that, that either died or, or they didn't get the expectations that they wanted. And so as a result, they, they curse God. They, they don't want to have anything to do with God because he took my mother away or he took my father away, you know, or, or he, my, I was believing him to, to heal my marriage and, and he didn't do it or whatever. So your expectation wasn't met. You got offended. And as a result, you fell away. Many people are going to fall away in the last days. It don't have to be you, my friend, because temptation and testing are coming. I'm going to be tested. You're going to be tested. And some of you are in the middle of a test right now. What will you do? Will you hold on to faith or will you cast away your confidence? The Bible says if you don't cast away your confidence, you will have great recompense of reward. Amen. Now let's go on the book of John. John chapter six, I want to show you something out of this particular um, one. Um, Jesus here in John chapter six is requiring a greater commitment of those who are following him, known as his disciples. Now, uh, understand, folks, there are many people today that are following Jesus for the fish and the loaves. What do you mean the fish and the loaves? The things that they can get from Jesus, you know, uh, instead of following Jesus just to be able to know and to do his will or the will of him who saved us, what are we doing? We're serving him because he's giving us the things that we want, you know, uh, or will, you know, and this is one of the things I, you've heard me say it before that we as preachers, we're at fault because we, we sold Jesus in that particular manner. You know, we, 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 um, we preach about the things that Jesus can do for us. And we preach about how he can not only save us, but he can, you know, uh, he can meet all of our needs and, you know, and he can give us the desires of our hearts and, you know, and he can just bless us abundantly. And, you know, he came that we may have life and have it more abundantly. He can give us wealth and prosperity and all of these things like that. And there are still people today that, that are holding on to God's pro uh, holding on to promises that God never promised them. Uh, and, and when they get disappointed, then they fall away. And that's mainly because that's the way we presented the gospel. That's the way we presented the kingdom. That's the way we presented Jesus. You can have your best life now. You know, you can be a winner now in this life. And that's true. You can be a winner in this life. But if you're having your best life right now, this is the best life you're going to get this side of eternity. Amen. I'm trying to tell you right now. So here it is in the book of John chapter six, something happened here. You know, um, if we look at the scripture, is here, we'll see that, that, you know, that Jesus had a multitude of people following him. 
And the Bible says that in verse number, let's go to verse number five, because this is something that's very vital and significant, very important. The Bible says, then Jesus lifted up his eyes and seeing a great multitude coming towards him, he said to Philip, where shall we buy bread that these may eat? Talking about the multitude. But this he said to test him for he himself knew what he would do. So what did he do? He lifted up his eyes and he saw a great multitude. He said to Philip, Philip, where do we have, where can we get enough bread to feed this multitude? And Jesus already knew what he was going to do. He knew he was going to feed that multitude, apparently because God already said to him through the Holy Spirit that I want you to feed the multitude. You know, Jesus is actually, uh, he said, remember, he said in the, in the book of Exodus, he said, there will come another prophet. There will arise another prophet like me. Moses said that, and he was referring to Jesus. And so Moses, uh, well, actually God gave them through Moses manna to eat in the wilderness. Here it is. Jesus is going to do the very same thing, but he's going to do it a different way. He's going to take the existing five, uh, two fish and five loaves. He's going to multiply that and distribute it to those in the wilderness. Wow, now running, that thing should have pointed towards Moses to say that Moses talked about a one who is going to come after me. Now, let's notice what happened here. So therefore, Jesus fed, uh, fed the multitude. After he fed the multitude, he sent the multitude away. And then after that, the Bible says that, that while he sent the multitudes away, he went up in a uh, mountain to pray. And as he was praying, you know, the disciples were sent away to go to the other side. And so Jesus came to them walking on the water. Amen. We can see that, you know, about, uh, let's see, we were there in uh, verse 15 of the same ch chapter, John, he talks about that. And then he got into the boat. And then the next day, the Bible talks about the people that were standing out there that saw Jesus uh, not get on the boat, but saw him go away and the other disciples going across to the sea. Amen. Uh, and they came the next day and, and they didn't see Jesus, but they went over to the other side. And when they got to the other side, Jesus was there and they wanted to, uh, well, wait a minute. We saw you send the, the, the multitude away. We saw you not get in the boat. You went to the, you went to pray. And, and, and how were you here? How did you get here? Well, they don't know that Jesus had walked on the water to go to, uh, uh, to across the sea to be with his, his, uh, his disciples. But here is what I, I want to show you now. Well, I'll start with verse number 25. And so as I start with verse number 25 and you, you begin to see why. Okay. The Bible says in verse number 25, and when they had found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them and said, now listen very carefully. He says, most assuredly, I say to you, you seek me not because you saw the signs, but you ate of the loaves and were filled. <laughs> he said, do not labor for food which perishes, but the food which endures to eternal or everlasting life, which the son of man will give you because God, the father hath set his seal on him. He's telling them straight up, you know, you came for the fish and the loaves. How many of us today are serving God for the fish and the loaves or what he can give us instead of uh, uh, serving him because it is the will of God that we serve the one who saved us? Come on, saints. We got to answer the question. You know, it's going to be tested. We're going to find out what we're all about because if we actually are serving Jesus for the fish and the loaves, when the fish and the loaves stop, guess what we're going to do? We're going to turn away. We're going to do like some of the other disciples did, which we're going to talk about in just a few minutes. Now, now when the Bible says that, uh, that Jesus said to Philip, uh, whence can we buy bread to feed this multitude? The scripture says that Jesus tested Philip. He tested them to see what, uh, cause he knew what he was going to do. Well, why did he test the, why did he test them? Why did he ask them that question? Now that word test is the word parezo. And it's, I, 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 you know, I'm not a Greek scholar, but I, I hope I'm pronouncing this right. Let's do this. Let's spell it so that you can understand. P-E-I-R-A-Z-O, parazo, parezo, or whatever. Okay. So that word means to try whether a thing can be done. It means to try to make a trial of or a test for the purpose of ascertaining his quality or what he thinks or how one will behave himself. Once again, I got to say that again. It is a test for the purpose of ascertaining his quality 
or what he thinks or how he will behave himself. And when it's speaking of God, it is the allowing of infliction of evils upon one in order to prove his character and the steadfastness of his faith. That's going back to the word that I told you about earlier, where the Bible talks about testing. And so God will test us by, because he will, he will allow, now I didn't say he'll send it, but he will allow the infliction of evil upon one in order to prove your character. Uh, you know, when he said, bless those that curse you. See, the character of Christ is to bless those that curse you. Remember when the Bible says that they, they were talking, they was hailing, um, insults at him and saying things like, you know, you can't, you, 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 you save others. You can't save yourself. Come on down from the cross. Then we believe. when they were hurling insults at him, what did he do? He said, father, forgive them. So that's the character of Christ. We get out of character when someone say something mean and evil or do something against us. That's vicious and hard and cruel. And when we, 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 we do the same thing instead of praying for our enemies, guess what? We're out of character. That is not the character of Christ. Will we be steadfast in what we, we are supposed to do in our faith and doing and trusting him? Because this is the way of Christ that we bless our enemies. We don't curse them. We don't do evil upon those who do evil to us. So therefore, once again, God will allow these things because he wants to test to see what's in our heart. And again, God knows everything. So therefore, he's not testing the sea uh, if, so that he can know what's in your heart. He already knows what's in your heart, but he wants you to see what's in your heart and hope that you would come to a place of repentance and realize that you can't do it in your own strength and pray, God, give me grace to do what pleases you because right now my heart's not right. I, I, I hate what people have done to me. I hate what they said about me. I hate that they did this to me, but I don't want to be like that. I want to be like you. I want to be meek and lowly like you, Jesus. You said, take my yoke upon you and learn of me for I'm meek and lowly and you shall find rest for your souls. And so Lord, I want to do it your way. So so help me, give me the grace to do it your way. See, God knows. And that's why he allows it because he wants you to see you're not where you think you are. Many times I thought I was over certain things and, and yeah, I got the victory and I've conquered certain things or whatever. And then a uh, test and trials come. And as a result, I, I failed the test because you know what? I thought I was something that I was. Come on, saints. Y'all know what I'm talking about. You do know what I'm talking about. Now, so now he wanted a greater commitment out of these people. Now, remember, he said in verse number, let's look what uh, he said. He said, Jesus said in verse number 26, the Bible says, Jesus answered and said to them, most assuredly, I say unto you, you seek me not because you saw the signs, but because you ate of the loaves and were filled. Now, people are just coming to Jesus for what they can get from him. Oh, Jesus can meet my need. Praise God. I'm, 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 I'm in. You know, but that's that's not what he's after. That's not what the Lord's after. Listen, he desired, he wanted a greater commitment from his uh, disciples. And when I say his disciples, he's not not necessarily talking about uh, uh, the, the the twelve disciples. But remember, there were seventy that also walked with him as well, and they were the ones who actually did miracles and things like that because Jesus gave them power as well of as giving his own twelve disciples. Now. After Jesus talked to them about being the bread of life, and, and excuse me for not talking to you right now, but I'm looking for something in the scriptures while I'm talking to you. So Jesus comes along and he tells them, I am the bread of life. Now let's go down to verse number 53. And, um, and I want to show you something here. Okay. If you get the time, please read John chapter six all the way. And listen, the things that I don't even share with you, 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 the same Holy spirit that's teaching me will teach you more things and give you a more in-depth knowledge. I only have a few minutes and I'm not going to take up a whole lot of time trying to spoon feed you. I want you to just get, get, um, get, get to the place whereby the things that I get you go back and check and see whether these things line up with your theology. And if it doesn't, uh, the Bible theology is what you need to make sure that you're, you're, you're having and that you're doing. Amen. Praise the Lord. So now let's look at verse number, uh, verse number 53. That's where we'll go. We'll go to verse number 53. Notice what the scripture says. Then Jesus said to them, most assuredly, I say unto you, unless you eat the flesh of the son of man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life and I will raise him up at the last day for my flesh is food indeed and my blood is drink indeed. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me and I in him. 
as the living father sent me, I live because of the father. So he who feeds on me will live because of me. This is the bread which came down from heaven, not as your fathers ate the manna and are dead. He who eats this bread, talking about himself, will live forever. And he said, and these things he said in the synagogue as he taught in Capernaum. Therefore, many of his disciples, when they heard this, said, this is a hard saying. Who can understand it? And then he went on to say, when Jesus knew in himself that disciples complained about us, he said to this, this, this offend you? What then, if you would see the Son of Man ascending where he was before? It is the Spirit who gives life. The flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. But there are some of you who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the beginning who they were who did not believe and who would betray him. And he said, therefore I have said unto you that no man can come unto me except it has been granted to him by my father. Now notice the next verse. From that time, many of his disciples went back and walk with him no more. Then Jesus said to the 12, do you also want to go away? But Simon Peter said to him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Notice what he said. Will you walk away also? Greater commitment. He's talking to his disciples now. Listen, it's, it's, it's not about flesh. It's not about eating flesh and, you know, bread and stuff like that anymore. It's not what you can get from God. Now he's saying to you, it's getting deeper now. So the commitment that we made to Christ, did you make it just because of the fish and the loaves? Or you made it because you want to serve the one who saved you? I mean, it just seems so, so, so uh, uh, relevant that if God did so much for us, because he loved us so much, you ought, to, you ought to want to do something for God. Think about it. If somebody, if you were drowning, let's say, in a, in a pond, and, and someone comes along and they throw you a lifeline, and they reel you in because you can't swim, and they reel you in, and they rescued your life, don't you feel like you owe them something? I mean, my God, we can't pay God back for anything that he's done for us. Nevertheless, we ought to have something on the inside of us says that I've got to do something for him because he saved my life. That's what I'm talking about. Many of you came just because you heard of the promises. You heard of the things that God can do. And some of the things God that, that people told you that God can do and will do for you, he didn't even promise that. Nevertheless, that's why you came. And so when you don't get your way, are you going to, one, fall away? Because Jesus is going to desire a committal. And that committal is you're going to have to sacrifice. Notice what he said. He said, except you eat the flesh of the son of man and drink his blood, you have no part with me. You have no life in you. And so that's a commitment. That's a sacrifice. He's talking about his sacrifice, his own sacrifice on the cross. And so now you're going to have to come to the communion. You're going to have to come to intimacy with him. You're going to have to come to a place whereby I need this life because there is no life in my life without his life. And so therefore I must partake. Man shall not eat of bread alone, but eat by bread, live by bread alone rather, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. So he's saying that you've got to partake of my flesh. This is a deep, listen, those guys who did miracles with the 70, they turned away. They didn't walk with Jesus anymore. And then Jesus turned to the 12 and said, you're going to go with him. You're going to go also. Peter made the choice. He says, Lord, where can we go? You have the words of eternal life. So in the midst of all that we're going through today, where can we go? What else can we turn to? Are we trusting in that? Are we trusting in this? Are we trusting the government? Are we trusting everything? Listen, a natural disaster hit. What do you think the government's going to do? You remember what happened? And, 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 um, and uh, during uh, uh, the um, Hurricane Katrina, a lot of people were left. It took the, a while for the government to even get mobilized to get in there and to try to help the people. And some of the people, God bless their hearts, they had to go and migrate to someplace else to start all over again. Because we put our trust and our confidence in man. And I'm saying to you today, we're in a time of testing. We are in a season of testing. If you lost your job, if you lost your home, if you lost your car, if you lost a family member, 
What will you say? What did Job say? The Lord giveth, the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We should learn a very, very important lesson from Job about testing. Because Job was tested. Remember, it wasn't God that set the test. It was the enemy. But God signed off on it. God allowed it. And at the end, the Bible, well, before the end, the Bible says Job did not sin with his mouth, nor charge God foolishly. But if you keep reading on through the chapters, you find out that Job said some things that, whoa, gosh, he could accuse God of doing this. He accused God of doing that. God, you, you slay me with your arrows. You, 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 you set me up as a mark, a target, and you, you tr come on, folks. Read the whole book before you start saying, well, Job didn't. Yeah, he didn't at the beginning, but then a little later on. And guess what his wife said? He said, Job, you still maintain your integrity. You still trust in God. You still have enough. all the stuff you, 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 you gave to the poor. You know, you care for the, 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 the fatherless and the widows and everything. All of the, you use your wealth to, to help other people and things like that. And, and you, you, you having faith in God. And, and after you having all this faith in God, he, uh, he does this to you. Man, you, why don't you just curse God and die? Don't maintain your integrity. Come on, folks. That's the sound of a foolish woman. And that's what Job said. So we need to make sure, we need to make ver be very sure that we are anchored in God, that we put our trust and our hope in him. Because again, this is a time of testing. A separation is occurring in the body of Christ right now. The wheat and the tares. Who are truly wheat and who are truly tares? Who are there for the fish and the loaves and who's there to make a commitment because they want to do the will of the Father that saved us. Praise God. We're in the season of testing. So therefore, now is the time to examine ourselves. Second Corinthians chapter 13, verse number five. Notice what the scripture says. He says, examine yourselves as to whether you are in the faith. Test yourselves. Do you not know yourselves that Jesus Christ is in you unless you indeed are disqualified? But I trust you will know that we are not disqualified. Examine yourselves is what we must do in this hour. We must put ourselves to the test. That word examine is the word dokamazo. It's spelled D-O-K-I-M-A-Z-O. And that means to prove or to test. It means to examine, to scrutinize, to see whether a thing is genuine or not, as in metals. To recognize as genuine after examination to approve and to deem worthy. Are you worthy to enter the kingdom? Are you worthy? That's what it means. Examine yourselves. Now is that time for us to examine ourselves and make sure that we're in the faith because our faith is being tested right now. You're being tested. Being tested. Listen, in my closing, I'm going to say this. And I know that people are probably going to disagree with me when I say this. You need to make sure that, how I'm going to say this. Make sure that you consult with God concerning every decision that you're about to make. Let's say it this way. The scripture says, in all thy ways, I tell you what, let's look at it. I'm going to pull it up for you because in the Old Testament, it's, it's in Proverbs. The Bible says, um, Proverbs number three, he says in verse number five, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. We need to consult with God concerning every major move that we're about to make. Some of you right now, you're thinking about moving to another state. Some of you are thinking about taking on another job or whatever. Listen, in all your ways, acknowledge him and he will give you direction. We need to make sure that we are trusting God and his Holy Spirit to direct us in the days ahead. Should you take that or not, 
is something that you shouldn't lean to your own understanding about. You need to ask God, is this what I need to do? I'm telling you, because there are some things that you need to educate yourself about before you make a decision to do what you're about to do. Once again, too many people are trusting and leaning to their own understanding. And let me tell you something. If you put your trust in man, man will dupe you. Man will trick you. <laughs> Man will lie to you. And these are the days of great deception. And so we need to make sure that we have the facts and we have the unction of the Holy Spirit allow, uh, telling us rather, rather we should do the thing that they're telling us that we need to do. Well, if I don't do this, I'm going to lose this. I'm going to lose that. That's right. We may lose some things, but you guess what? I'd rather gain heaven. Now, I'm not saying that if you do what I'm talking about, that you will lose, uh, that you, that you, you know, you will sin against God or anything like that. I'm just saying for the sake of, let's put it this way, for your own sake, trust the Lord. Lean not to your own understanding. Acknowledge God in all your ways and allow him to direct your path. Father, thank you so much for this time with your people. Every word that I've spoken today, I trust that I've spoken unctioned by your Holy Spirit. I thank you so much for teaching us and instructing us in the way that we should go. Thank you for giving us understanding through the scriptures and through the power of the Holy Spirit. Jesus, I ask you to lead, guide, direct, and steer your people by the power of the Holy Spirit those that are yours and those who want to please you. We don't want to follow you anymore, Lord, for the fish and the loaves. We want to follow you who have given us eternal life. We want to follow you because we want to do the will of the Father. And that is to believe on your Son, to trust in Him, to follow Him, to be disciples of Him. Lord, we thank you so much for your good pleasure. You've called us out of darkness into your marvelous light. And there's a dark world out there that desires to deceive the people of God and the people of this world. And we're coming into a time of great testing called the Great Tribulation. And it is my prayer right now that as we pre-tribulation people, well, we're not in the tribulation yet, we know that. But as we prepare our hearts, Lord, I pray, Father, that we get the right mind, the right spirit, Lord, about the things that are about to come to pass. We pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, that you would lead us and navigate us through the treacherous times ahead. Lord, we know that there's perilous times that are coming. You told us in the word, and we live in these perilous days today. But, oh, Lord, we trust in you. We place our hope in you. We place our confidence in no man, but we trust in you. So as you make your will known to us, Lord, give us grace to obey. Give us grace to stand. Give us grace to suffer any kind of loss that we will suffer, knowing that in heaven we have a great and enduring substance, as you said in the word in Hebrews. We thank you so much for your Holy Spirit, who is our teacher, who is our comforter. Thank you for our counselor. Thank you, Lord, for him being our intercessor, our advocate, our strengthener, our standby, and our helper. We are not alone. You promise you never leave us, you never forsake us. And it is my prayer, O oh God, that your people that's listening to this message today, Father, would know that this is not just words, but it is the promise of God and you stand by it. You sealed us, hallelujah, with your Holy Spirit until the day of redemption, and you cannot lie. And so we trust you, Lord, and forgive us for when we did not believe and we did not trust in you. Thank you so much for your mercy and your grace. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.
God, we thank you. All right, well, thank you so much for joining us today. We want you to subscribe. If you like this video, just click like below and subscribe to our channel and share it with someone else because I'm quite sure there's others out there that need to hear the things that are being said by the Holy Spirit on this YouTube channel. Thank you so much for watching us. Until next time, this is Kenneth Dentley reminding you of 1 John 4 and 4, ye of God, little children, you've overcome the world because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. God bless you. Until next time, shalom.